Hi, I'm Jake. Uh, I was diagnosed with avoidant personality disorder in 2021, and I wanted to make a video about it for a long time, but I'm really bad at it. So I deleted the last attempt I made, but uh, I saw Marnie's videos about it recently and decided I should I should try again. So here we are. It's going to be awkward, and I'm going to be reading notes sometimes. So forgive me for that. But I wanted to make this because, you know, there are very few videos uh, about avoidant personality disorder from people that actually have it. It's just psychologists reading their textbook and such, which is not very helpful. So I wanted to share as much info as possible from the perspective of someone who has it, a lot of stuff that's not been talked about a bunch, and hopefully help others that have avoidant personality disorder feel a little better. Uh, so first off, quick introduction for me. I'm 24. I like metal music, video games, and writing fantasy novels. That's about it. Let's get into the good stuff. I also have been diagnosed with uh, social anxiety disorder and persistive, persistent depressive disorder, just so we're on the same page. So first quick introduction to what a personality disorder is for someone who doesn't know. It's basically persistent personality traits that cause distress or impairment. Pretty simple. Uh, so avoidant personality disorder is in cluster C, the anxious uh, personality disorders, and the other ones in that cluster are dependent personality disorder and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Now with the textbook shit out of the way. So the main symptoms uh, of this are anxiety. So there's a few different types. So there's passive anxiety, which basically I always feel sick, stressed, and worried, and usually about nothing in particular. So that's fun. Uh, the major one is social anxiety. So I'm extremely uncomfortable interacting with any other people because, you know, I'm worried I'm gonna fuck up and say something stupid. I'm worried they're gonna see I'm in visible discomfort physically because, you know, I usually am. And uh, I'm extremely worried about what any potential negative reactions people might have to me or my personality or my opinions. So I don't really wanna say anything. And then there's situational anxiety, which is basically just something really bad happens as far as anxiety goes. And so depending on the setting, uh, that might result in me getting super angry, hyperventilating, screaming, or crying. Or if I'm in public and not, not just with a friend or something, it's usually just tearing up, sh uh, shaky speech, chattering teeth, and trembling arms, which is plenty, really. So um, it's sort of the trifecta of dread, panic, and shame with this disorder because <clears throat> you feel really bad before you try to do something. That's the dread. You feel really bad when you're doing it. That's the panic. And then you feel really bad afterwards, which is the shame. And that is both temporarily afterwards, like for a week I might think about nothing but something stupid I said or whatever. And then it's also permanent, which is, you know, I'll never really forget it. It might go to the back of my mind after a while, but... I'll think of it again later and it'll make me feel like shit again later, uh, which is of course, you know, not normal for things that are really small and not that important, but that's, that's how this disorder works. So the reason why that happens, uh, is basically, uh, I read into what people are saying really intensely. So if they say anything, I take it for what the worst it could possibly mean. And uh, the same thing for facial expressions and body language. And so I assume people are judging me all the time. And <clears throat> I'm really bad at handling explicit criticism, basically because I have no ego at all. So, I, you know, I feel like shit about myself all the time. So anytime anyone criticizes me, it's like, damn, I don't really have any defense for that. So, you know, just kind of kind of have to deal with it without anything to make you feel like, no, that's not true. So... Uh, part of the reason I feel like I have no ego is because uh, I don't feel like I'm good at anything. I don't have the persistence to finish anything I'm trying to do. You know, if I'm trying to write something, eventually I'll just get sick of it, decide it's shit, give up. <clears throat> Same thing for really anything else. And then if I do finish anything, what am I supposed to do with it? You know, I, I can't talk to people, so I can't really share anything I create. You know, even online, it's extremely stressful for me to so much as post a text comment worrying what people might say about it, even if it's something super innocuous or a popular opinion or whatever. And so something like this video is definitely much worse, but, uh, you know, trying my best. So, uh... I also don't like myself and have no ego because I feel like I have a super shitty personality because there's this, there's the simple reasons like I'm too anxious to talk about much of anything or to do anything because I don't want to go anywhere and I don't want to share my opinions 
I'm very easily overstimulated because everything makes me anxious, which can include loud noises and shit. Uh, kind of like, you know, people that have autism. I do not, but similar sort of thing. I'm super impatient and prone to anger, which obviously those are not good personality traits. Again, they are related to this disorder somewhat, but it doesn't, you know, make it any more palatable for anybody else. Uh, I also tend to deprecate myself and others, you know, just it kind of kind of takes the edge off anything anybody else is going to say. If you shit talk yourself first, they're just like, well, he already said it. I don't know if he's being if he really feels that way or not, but he said it. So I'm not going to. So you can kind of deflect from criticism in that way. So I tend to do that to myself. And as a result, I tend to do that to other people. I just like shit talking people because it makes me feel better shit talking myself. So I kind of assume that it works the other way if I'm being joking about it. But of course, it really doesn't. Um, I also tend to be sarcastic and absurd sometimes, you know, just again, sort of just distracting from my, my real, uh, problems just by confusing people basically. Um, and so all of that makes me feel like I have a negative personality. And so I feel super guilty about that. And, you know, it kind of goes into the whole, feel like I have no positive traits thing, which is a important part of this disorder. Um, and what causes all of that anxiety. And when I do occasionally think I might be good at something or good for something, and there's something I should feel good about, my brain tells me that's me being egotistical, which of course isn't true because that's kind of the whole thing about this disorder is I feel extremely shitty about every part of myself. So finally finding one thing, it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. It doesn't make me egotistical, but that's what my brain tells me. So, you know, it makes me feel like shit more about it. So, as you can tell by that and the other things I've said, it's a condition that's pretty much extremely illogical. Even to people who have it, it feels like, what the fuck? This doesn't make any sense. But it's just how it is for us. You know, I recognize that it doesn't make any sense, but I can't control it in spite of that. So as far as where it came from, I think to some degree it's intrinsic to me because things I did super early in my life, really before I had a chance to form a personality. Uh, for example... Uh, when I was attending preschool, I would run all the time to avoid going, like literally get out of the car there and flee and hide behind a tree or some shit. And in elementary school, I would fake sickness and shit, you know, the licking light bulbs to make yourself throw up and dumb shit like that, uh, to just try to get out of going to school because I didn't want to deal with anybody. So in that way, it's sort of intrinsic, but at the same time, it's somewhat learned, I think, by, uh, things that happened in my childhood or rather didn't, uh, you know, I feel like, uh, people were quick to criticize me when I wasn't doing well enough and slow to praise me when I was. So that, you know, I kind of just work under the assumption that people are judging me and they're preparing criticisms whenever they're, you know, listening to whatever I'm saying or just looking at me. <clears throat> and anytime I do get praise, I feel like it's just placatory. It's like, I think I pronounced that wrong, but you know what the hell I'm trying to say. Uh, it's just like, they're trying to make me feel better. They're trying to make me calm the fuck down, basically and that they don't really believe it. So, you know, and that, that extends to myself too. Whenever I feel good about something, I'm like, damn, my brain's just trying to get me to chill the fuck out. Um, so then basically what, what all this shit results in is a couple different things. So if you have high functioning avoidant personality disorder, <clears throat> you probably have persistent extreme anxiety and panic when you're trying to start or maintain relationships or employment or whenever you're trying to do something new in a public setting or not so new, you know, varying degrees of what you can consider new, <clears throat> especially if you're just talking to someone or if you're trying to make eye contact. Um, and you tend towards calm and slow interactions with familiar people. So if you do have a job, you might want something that, that is easy from that perspective, like not having to talk to a whole bunch of new people, or if you do, it's brief conversations and generally a calm setting, not the sort of people that are going to get super pissed off at you. <clears throat> and people with high-functioning avoidant personality disorder tend to make some progress as they acclimate. They always have these issues. It doesn't go away, but they can sort of accept that they don't need to feel this anxiety. It's not based on anything in reality, <clears throat> and it makes it easier to just at least keep doing what they're doing. Then there's low functioning avoidant personality disorder, which is me. Uh, so if you 
if you try to go out and do stuff and acclimate yourself rather than make progress, uh, people with low functioning avoidant personality disorder tend to just reinforce their anxieties and panics because, you know, they do the same thing where they take criticism really hard that high functioning people do. Uh, and they take people's, uh, you know, body language and whatever to, uh, assume that they're judging them, but they just do it to a higher degree. So you just, you really don't have a easy time being like, see, this wasn't so bad. It's like, yeah, that, that really was so bad. That, that sucks. Don't want to do that anymore. So, uh, how it, how it happens for me is that you become totally unable to work or have friendships or do simple tasks in public or even leave your house. So for me, I had one job when I was in high school, working at the high school as a tech support technician assistant, and I have not worked since then. That was a, maybe a year and a half or something in high school, and I'm 24. Um, and I went to college for uh, half a sem or one semester before dropping out. So yeah, I, I haven't seen any of my friends in person since, I don't know, uh, six years ago or so. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I can't go to the store. I can't go get groceries. Uh, I have a hard time getting gas from my car, which, you know, I do have to drive on occasion just between different places where my family is. But, um, I, I, you know, actually going to get out of my car at the gas station is even difficult for me because, you know, I'm just worried people are, people are staring at me basically it makes me uncomfortable. So, um, I pretty much don't leave my house except for, you know, very short 10 minute drive kind of things. Um, and really never go anywhere in public. So like I said, I have anxiety even from typing comments online or sending emails or whatever. Uh, I can't handle phone calls at all. They're maybe even worse than in-person interactions because you get the same feeling that you can tell they're judging you from their voice, but you can't see the body language and facial expressions to sort of, you know, feel better or at least confirm it and be like, okay, fuck this. You just, you only have what they're saying and the tone of their voice and it's, it's real bad. <clears throat> and uh, another thing is that I have really severe secondhand shame. So if someone else does something embarrassing that I find embarrassing, it doesn't have to actually be embarrassing in any real capacity, but if they do something I find embarrassing in my presence, that makes me super embarrassed too. And that can extend to things that don't really exist. Like I have a hard time watching cartoons or tv shows often because you know obviously the characters are supposed to have conflict is supposed to be funny haha ha, look at what that stupid guy did uh, uh but it makes me embarrassed in real life uh which is real fucking weird but yeah that's how it is and as a result of all of these things uh i'm super depressed all the time as you can imagine i have a hard time enjoying anything because well i can't do much of anything the things i can do i do alone and i tend to get sick of them we'll talk more about that later uh, I want to do a whole series of videos about this uh, because, you know, it's impossible to convey everything in one video and I'm trying to not make this too fucking long. So one thing we're going to go over before the very end of it is the subtypes that are said to exist of this disorder, which will let me talk about some more of the symptoms that I have that are really important to me but are not as important to determining how I function. Um, <clears throat> so for me, these four subtypes are more of a ranking. You know, it's not like I have one of the subtypes. I have all of the subtypes, but to different degrees. Um, so if you have avoidant personality disorder and you've seen these subtypes, uh, I'm curious whether you would agree with that, whether you'd say you mostly have one subtype or whether you would rank them or somewhere in between. So we'll go over them. So the first one is the phobic subtype, which is the one I feel like I have the least of. So this is uh, anxiety over existing relationships and dependence on those relationships and fear of abandonment from the people in those relationships. So I don't have this one so much, um, but, you know, it, it does still exist to the point where it's like even people I should be super comfortable with, like my brother, my family, otherwise, um, I'm not always super comfortable with them. I, I do the same awkward shit like you know, constant sarcasm, absurd shit, self-deprecation, just to try to, you know, yeah, make, you know, I don't know, distract from who I am, I guess. Um, and I am dependent to some degree in that basically I, I am, I don't work. So I'm dependent on other people to keep me alive, more or less. Um, so there's that, but I don't feel, 
I don't feel dependent as in like an attachment. It's just like I physically am dependent on other people. And then the abandonment fear, uh, I don't really have that. You know, I don't, <clears throat> I don't feel like I have any relationships that I, I'm, I'm super attached to. So <clears throat> that doesn't really apply to me as much. Then there's the conflicted subtype of avoidant personality disorder, which is uh, basically people that tend to dwell on their desires that they see as unfulfillable. So basically what that means in plain English is you really want to do something. Usually the obvious one is like, you know, have friends, have a relationship, get a job. Uh, and you find yourself unable to do that. You feel like you're incapable of doing that because of the anxiety and all the other symptoms. Um, and you can't stop thinking about it. So I definitely suffer from this, uh, mostly due to creative projects like writing and stuff and, you know, developing video games, uh, playing music in a band. Uh, I really want to do all that stuff, but I basically can't. I can't so much as leave my house without feeling like shit. So, uh, yeah, can't, can't really do any of that. And I'd like to, so I definitely think about it a lot. Um, and I've definitely, uh, felt this, uh, subtype more in the last little while as, uh, you know, I've sort of just gotten used to my depression over the past six years. And it's just like, you know, I don't passively feel suicidal quite as often as I did, you know, just thinking about it every day. Um, but so I have more time to think about other stuff, like all the stuff I'd like to do that I can't do. Then the next subtype of AVPD is hypersensitive. And this is definitely my number one tied with the last one. So this basically just means you have very extreme reactions to real or perceived criticism and especially anger as a reaction to people who are close to you. If you're not comfortable with someone, you might get mad at them, but you're not going to show it. But if there's someone you're relatively close to, you might get super pissed off at them over basically nothing, you know, that you perceive as criticism, which is a thing with this whole disorder. But, you know, the subtype just means it's especially intense, which is for me. And as a result of that, you have... Uh, lots of paranoia because you're just always worried about what people are going to say. Again, just kind of the disorder overall, but super intense on that part. And another thing I feel like the subtype uh, specializes in is second the secondhand shame I talked about. So somebody does su something embarrassing in front of you and you get embarrassed because of it, even if you don't know that person. Uh, I feel like the hypersensitive subtype is uh, going to deal with that more. And the last subtype is self-deserting, which uh, basically means you have existential depression because uh, whatever things you enjoy, you know they're going to be over. You know, I don't have many things that I do enjoy. And while I'm doing them, I always think about how it's not going to last much longer because I'm going to give up on it for some reason or another, which I always do. So it's not, you know, based in nothing. But at the same time, obviously dwelling on it does not help. I, you know. And then the other part of that subtype is basically that your brain tries to make up for your non-existent ego by creating fantasies. And this is something that's really complicated, I feel like. It's mentioned on like a Wikipedia page or in any article, um, but I don't feel like anyone that diagnoses this really understands what that means, at least for me. I can't obviously speak for everyone. Um, but for me, this means something super specific where randomly I'll start going on this daydream where, you know, I, my brain just concocts a fake scenario and I just play through it with dialogue and stuff. And it's basically my brain's attempt at being like, wow, what if this happened? How good would that be? How cool would that be? Make yourself feel better. That could be awesome for you. Uh, but it's, it's really weird because while it's happening, it's, it's kind of exciting. And then it, it ends within a few minutes and uh, it's very obvious that that's not going to happen based off of all the other problems you have with this disorder. It's just some complete made up bullshit and usually it's something completely, it just doesn't make any sense from any perspective. Even if you didn't have this disorder, it's just some oddly specific event basically. And I'll talk more about that later because it's super confusing and I've never heard anyone else talk about it and I'm not sure if anyone else experiences those the same way I do. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk more about that later. So this video is long enough. Uh, I hope it wasn't too rambly. Uh, I was just trying to introduce how this disorder is for me, for someone who feels like they have all of the symptoms that are loosely described online, but no one ever really goes into any detail. Uh, very few people that have it talk about it for obvious reasons, the extreme anxiety, people don't want to post videos of themselves talking about it, 
looking like a rambly dumbass reading his notes. Um, and especially for me, someone with low functioning, I, ha I haven't really seen any other videos from someone low functioning, uh, again, for extremely obvious reasons. But uh, I hope this helps uh, spread some information to people who don't know anything about it. And for people who do, makes you feel a little better, I guess. Kind of depressing, but you know, I'm here too. And uh, yeah, I'll be back doing some more videos soon. If you have any specific ideas, you can let me know, but I got a whole list of stuff I'm planning to do. So yeah, cool. Thanks for watching.